It's one of the most exciting camper vans to debut in recent memory. I'm talking about the 2019 Heimer Active 2.0 Loft Edition, y'all, and I'm gonna review it starting right now. Hi everyone, I'm Neil Balthaser and welcome to Ultra Mobility, the channel where you vote for the RVs that you wanna see reviewed and compared. Before we pop into the van and experience all that loft goodness, let's have a look at the exterior and go over some chassis specs. Now from the outside, it looks pretty much like the normal Active 2.0. When the top is down, it's clean, there's no swoopy graphics, and they've minimized vents and access doors to components. But when that top is up, everyone's gonna be jealous. This is a thing of beauty. It's like having a second story on your RV. While we're on the driver's side of the van, let's take a quick look at the driver's seating position. Here I am sitting in the driver's seat. I'm 5'10 and I have the seat all the way back and comfort was okay, but the seat back was a little too vertical for my tastes and there was no room to lean it back any further. If you're taller than me, then you're likely not going to be comfortable driving the Active on longer trips. The Ram Promaster is a front-wheel drive, 3.6 liter V6 Pentastar engine with a six-speed transmission delivering 208 horsepower and 260 foot-pounds of torque. Now that we got the chassis specs out of the way, let's head inside, where in addition to the loft, there's another surprise waiting for you. Okay, here we are on the inside of the Active 2.0 Loft Edition. And the first thing you notice is the ladder leading up to the loft above. But if you look around to the back, you can see that this Loft Edition is also the rear sofa bed layout. And that's your surprise. This is going to be like two reviews in one, the Loft Edition and the rear sofa bed configuration. I just wish you guys could give me two thumbs up. We're going to head back to the rear lounge in a bit, but first let's talk about this loft. So the way you pop the top is pretty straightforward. You release two catches, one on each side of the van, and you push up the top. It sounds simple in theory, but in reality, it takes a little effort to raise the roof. The top itself uses gas struts to help you lift, but the top is still pretty heavy and you have to walk your way up the ladder as you're lifting. Once the top is fully deployed, that's it. It automatically stays in place. There are no locks to set. Here we are inside the loft and you can see it's pretty spacious. There's windows on each side and on the front, which also includes zippered screens. A big surprise is that ginormous skylight from the regular Active is still here. When the roof is raised, the loft gains even more light, and that's pretty cool. You can see that the bed is a good size, even for two adults. I'm 5'10", and I've got plenty of room on the 70 by 50 inch bed. And as an added bonus, the bed uses the Froley sleep system to give you more support. I found the bed to be adequately comfortable. There are a couple things to note, however, about the loft. First, there is no power up here. No lights, no USB outlets, nothing. At night, you're going to need to bring your own flashlight or install some tap lights. Second, there is no heating or cooling up here. You've got the screened windows and that's it. On the European model, there's a hose that can attach to the heater vent in the lower lounge and redirect heat up to the loft, but there's no such option available on the American version. All right, let's head down into the front lounge and see what changes in this loft edition. The front lounge in this loft edition is nearly identical to the regular active. You've got a jump seat that seats two, kind of, it's not really big enough for two adults, but two kids would be fine. One thing I really like is that Heimer includes two additional three-point seat belts on the jump seat. 
Also, the seat's pretty comfortable with lumbar support and headrests. The tabletop folds away and also extends out to nearly double its size so that when the two cab seats are swiveled around, there's room for four. A really cool feature is that they kept that enormous skylight in the front lounge, which there's a reason why they had to do it, and I'll get to that when we talk about the bathroom. Finally, with an optional mattress, you can convert this front lounge into a 70 by 33 inch bed, large enough for a single adult or couple kids. Before we move to the galley, let's talk about some standout features and prices on the Active Loft Edition. First off, you're getting ducted heating, which means heat's going to be more evenly distributed and it's going to be quieter, which you're going to appreciate at night. Also, the side and rear screen doors are included as standard features. Other coach manufacturers like Pleasureway charge thousands of dollars for their screen package upgrades. Moving on back to the midsection and the galley, where we're going to talk about the electrical system. As galleys go, this one is pretty good. There's a two burner propane stove, sorry, no induction option on the active, and a sink with a residential type faucet. Good on you, Heimer, for not going with the marine style sink. There's a kind of dinky 0.7 cubic foot non-convection microwave oven hanging above the counter. And surprisingly, there's pretty good storage, both under the sink with three good sized drawers and a little pantry across the aisle. Speaking of aisleways, take a look at the one below you. It's pretty constrained and you're going to be doing the galley shuffle if you're working in the kitchen and someone needs to get past you. The biggest beef I have with the galley is its refrigerator. On the plus side, it's compressor driven, which means it's going to cool down faster than a three-way and it will keep things colder in hotter weather. But look at the size of this thing. It's only 3.1 cubic feet. I mean, that's about as big as the one I had in my college dorm room. It's not big enough for a family camping trip which is too bad since the Loft Edition is being billed as a family camper van. Note to Heimer, please figure out how to put in a larger refrigerator in the next generation. Now let's talk about the electrical system. What you get stock is two lead acid batteries, a 2000 watt inverter and an underhood generator. For those of you who don't know what an underhood generator is, it's just a second alternator installed in the engine compartment that supplies electricity for recharging your coach batteries. It removes the need for a bulky and noisy gas or propane generator. And the big news here is that Heimer includes it as standard. So as stock setups go, this one's going to meet your needs. If you want the ability to run your air conditioner off your batteries for longer periods of time, then you have the option to upgrade to Volt Start, which is Heimer's remote start system for $1,900. Volt Start automatically starts the engine to recharge the lithium batteries and stop it when they're charged. Time to move to the rear of the van and check out the rear lounge slash bedroom and also talk about the bathroom. So this is the sofa bed configuration. I really love this layout because it just gives me so much flexibility in this little 21 foot van. I've got three sleeping areas, two lounges and two dining areas. I could have a permanent bed set up back here and a lounge up front or a lounge back here and a dining area up front or two dining areas or two lounges. I mean, my head's exploding with possibilities. Not only that, but this sofa gives you an additional two three-point seat belts, and that means that this coach right here can sit, count them with me, one, two up front, three, four in the jump seats, five, six back here, six people in proper three-point seat belts. That's just amazing, and it means this coach also functions as a touring coach. Okay, let's talk about this lounge. I'm gonna be honest with you, is not perfect. The windows are kind of smallish. 
The ottomans aren't that comfortable to sit on. The cushions aren't properly latched down. There's no TV. But really, who cares? This is the second lounge. The main lounge is up front and it's got more comfortable seats, a TV, a larger table. This is fine as a second lounge. You can pop in a pedestal table and have a second poker game going on back here, no problem. There's no other van on the market that's this size and offers two lounges where each lounge can accompany four adults. None. So I'm not complaining about the rear lounge. Let's talk about how this area works as a bedroom. When you electrically recline the sofa, you can sleep as two twin beds, which you see here. Keeping in mind I'm 5'10", and I just fit on the driver's side. On the passenger side, I don't fit. It's not long enough. You can fill in the middle section and then sleep widthwise. And this is a better arrangement if both people are taller, but still, if you're six foot, you're not going to be able to stretch out fully. As far as comfort, I got to be honest, it's not that comfortable. It's not terrible, but you're going to need a mattress topper to make it work. Part of the problem is that there's not enough memory foam in the sofa and the ottomans don't use any at all. So as a bedroom goes, this one's okay. But keep in mind, if you're not feeling this bed set up, you've got two other sleeping areas you can move to. Finally, let's take a quick look at the bathroom. Size-wise, it's exactly the same dimension as what's on the regular Active 2.0. You've got a cassette toilet, which I know many of you don't like, but one of the advantages of the cassette toilet is that you can spin it to give yourself more room when standing or seated. There's a medicine cabinet here and a flip-down sink. Sitting on the toilet is surprisingly comfortable. I've been in larger bathrooms where my shoulders were squished or my head was bumping into something, but not so here. There's not a tremendous amount of standing height, but let's be honest, you're not going to be taking any showers in here standing up anyway. There is one huge thing missing, however. Look up. See anything? That's right, you don't, because they had to take out the powered rooftop fan. That's because the loft is above you. Remember when I said we'd come back to that skylight in the lounge? Well, they had to keep it in because without it, there would be no rooftop ventilation at all. As it is, not having any ventilation in the bathroom is a real problem. At least on the European model, they put in a window behind the sink for some ventilation. I guess you're going to have to shower with the bathroom door open. All right, it's judgment time. Should you avoid the Active 2.0 Loft Edition, consider it, shortlist it, or run out and buy it? I think you should shortlist it. It's a great van. It's really functional, highly flexible. It comes with an industry-leading six-year transferable warranty plus two years of roadside assistance. Honestly, if it weren't for its smallish cargo carrying capacity, I'd recommend that you run out today and buy this van. So how do you like this new format for reviews? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to really encourage me to continue making reviews like this, click the circular subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications.